Welcome back guys. Today we need to talk about some very important topic and that's the difference between different BMS systems. And we are going to cover active BMSs versus passive BMSs. And even more importantly we are going to cover cheap China BMSs versus the more expensive ones. I'm not going to go very deep into every subject but I'm going to cover a couple of points that I think many people misses when they hunt for a BMS system or even a balancer for that matter because as I have stated in earlier videos a balancer is just a part or a function in most BMS systems the thing is that one of the balancers that many talk about that they add is just a balancing function without nothing else a BMS itself is a management system so let's take a look at the paper and see what we can do about it so first of all we need to talk a little bit about just quickly what is the difference between an active balancing function or a passive balancing function. The thing is that the active balancer generally transfers energy from one cell to another and that is from a high voltage or higher state of charge to a cell with a lower state of charge. That can be done in many different ways and I'm not going to go into those details today. But generally the purpose of those is that if you have a pack or a cell that have lower capacity you can extend the life or the state of charge or the uh, duty cycle you have on the pack by moving energy from one cell or one pack that have more energy than the other one. So let's go into detail on the paper. So guys we need to talk a little bit about the BMS and active versus passive. Active versus passive. So we know that the active part is actually transferring energy from one pack to another. That's the big advantage. You are not losing the same amount of energy. Meanwhile, the passive is burning off energy. So we will start with a simple one, the passive BMS system. What does the passive BMS system? So let's say we have this 12 volt system here with three cells in series. I know that it's a little bit weird to draw them like this, but they are in series. A passive system potentially burns off excess energy when needed. So let's say you have a system and we are representing the state of charge with a line in here. So basically, this is the state of charge and we have, let's say, 50% on this one and this one have 70% meanwhile this one is almost full with 95% so to get them in balance the passive actually burns off energy of the top cells depending on the type it does it simply by attaching a resistor to the cell itself and waste the energy into heat. So that's the simple approach of the passive system. So then you may say, yeah, but you are burning off all the energy you have. Yes, you will be burning off energy in the beginning until you have all of those cells aligned at 50%. This initial uh, balancing takes some time and will burn off excess energy, that's correct. But the thing is, when you already have everyone aligned properly, you will have... ...with the same amount of energy. Everyone with 50%. Now, when you start to charge it up, they should stay consistent both in the top and in the bottom, if the capacity of the cells are the same. If the capacity of the cells aren't the same, they will, will be varying. In that case, you generally do or utilize a top balancing method, where you balance everything to the top. The shiniest balance that you find generally starts to balance or bleed off when you reach above 4.25 volt. That's the most common Chinese balancer, that what they do is just bleed off the energy when you're above 4.25. And that's generally top-top balance. So if you have a Chinese balancer, 
and you set your top voltage to 4 volt, they will never balance itself unless one of the cells goes above 4.25 and that generally means that some of the other cells most likely is below 3.9 depending on the number of cells. So that is the true thing about Chinese balancing. But if you have for instance a Batrium system or any other system where you can set the voltage, you can potentially set the system to balance, let's say, above 4.00 volt. And then you of course need to set the charges to charge only to 4 volt per cell. And then you will get the top balancing part. The thing is with the passive balance is generally don't balance during the full state of charge. You only balance through the tops up here. And that is because if you have different capacity you will just burn excess energy. When you have done the initial balancing on the passive balancer, you should not have to balance unless you have a pack that is self-discharging or in some way are faulty. So this is the nifty or the nice thing about the balancing function. You should never have to balance a pack that are working perfectly fine. But if you ha have a pack that are self-discharging, you will have a scenario like this. So basically you have the three packs again and you have this pack here is self-discharging. That means that this pack is getting lower and lower for every run. To get that back in pace again, what you need to do is just charge up the packs and the balancer will start to bleed off energy from that pack and from that pack. And this is a little bit costly because you're actually wasting 2x the energy instead of actually charging this pack here. But how much energy are we talking about? In general, nothing. I mean, very, very little. I will, in the end of this talk, go through a couple of scenarios where I show you a comparison with my system to a balancing or active system and show the reason why the passive balancing is generally the most common or the most best practice for most systems out there. So now let's get back to the active system itself. The active system is a little bit different because in an active system you have many advantages um, for batteries but at the same time you have many disadvantages as well. So once again we have the packs with different state of charge. The, what the active balancing can do uh, and I'm not talking about how they do it because they can do it in many different ways. What they do then is actually transferring energy. So they can potentially take energy from that cell, transfer to that cell and take energy from that cell also and transfer to that cell. Note that every time you transfer energy, 10 to 20 percent are lost. I'm taking a general number here. I know that there are more efficient systems, but just for fun of it, let's say 10 to 20 percent because the cheaper ones are up there. They are producing heat. Uh, that balancing means that you potentially can balance whenever you want. Uh, active balancing can still be used during top balancing or bottom balancing, but if you do that, you potentially don't save much energy. Yes, in the method of having a self-discharging pack, uh, you save energy by, instead of burning off those two cells' capacity, we're talking about pretty much of capacity because all these need to be burned off, Instead, you move half of it to, or third of it, to this cell here. And by moving the energy, minus the capacity lost, you actually save energy. So this is where the active balancing is better than a passive balancing. Let's talk about cells with different capacities. Let's say you have... So basically, as you can see here, this one has one amp hour. Meanwhile, these have 3 amp hour and these have 2 amp hour. The thing about having packs with different sizes, and these packs become different sized after some time. Uh, and they do that because they are getting worn out. 
Um, they can be designed like this from the beginning, but generally you should have designed it properly from the start so they are even. But let's say you have packs like this. Let's say you had to pull out a couple of packs out of one of the series packs. And the reason for that is because they got corrupt and you want to continue to run it. Uh, a passive balancer is no good at this scenario because the passive balancer will only top balance it kind of and in the end I mean at most you can use here is one amp power because as soon as you have used more than one amp power from this total pack here this battery will go dead. Uh, the thing is many people say that you cannot mix capacitors. Yes you can mix it whatever you want uh, as long as you don't ex exceed uh, the current that the lowest one can give out, it is not a problem. The thing is they will keep the voltage match inside the packs. But if you have them in series, uh, this one will drop in voltage a lot faster than this one, because this one have higher capacity. And this is where the active balance are really good because an active balancer can during discharge move energy from that cell to that cell and potentially give this whole pack up to 2 amp hour of runtime instead of 1 amp hour because an active balancer can potentially take 1 plus 3 plus 2 equals 6 amp hour split among 3 giving us 2 amp hour uh, minus losses of course so basically you would potentially get 2 amp hour out of this pack instead of 1 amp hour minus the losses with an active balancing system but that also demands that the active balancing system can cope with the current so let's say you're using those 6 amp hour 6 amps uh, one as balancers they potentially balance around half an amp if you're close to the same voltage. That means that you cannot drain more than half an amp out of the battery pack and keep them in balance during the full state of charge. From full all the way down to empty. Hopefully you get it. It's a little bit complicated to explain. But if you have questions about it, please feel free to post them down below in the comments. And I will try to answer them or do a follow up video. So we are talking about this scenario here now. So let's say you have a normal power wall pack. Uh, the thing is, uh, in a normal power wall pack, let's take my pack for instance, I have a huge pack. Uh, if you haven't seen the videos, check my, out my videos. Where I have over 100 kilowatt hours, uh, over 20,000 cells. I'm using passive balancing of course. Uh, and the reason for that is because I have no use for active balancing. I think I waste let's say a couple of amp hours per day in total uh, and that's only when my pack are fully charged when are you running an active balancing and when are you running a passive balancing most common best systems are only balancing in a passive range when you are charging and generally only when they are full in this scenario here we can see either above 4.25 volt that means full or a custom set voltage and for instance Batrium you can set that you should only balance when you are state of charge above uh, let's say 95% uh, charging and so forth so you can set the values when you are balancing and that means you are not wasting energy that you don't have because as soon as the battery bank becomes full, that's when you actually have energy to balance. That's the good part. Meanwhile, some of the active balances are constantly moving energy around the packs. Let's say you are around 70% state of charge. Do I need to balance at that state of charge? Why? I only consider you need active balancing when you are state of charge in the bottom here. And that is to move energy from the high cell to the low cell to extend the uh, operation range and that's when the active balancing are useful so basically if you are going between 70 and 90 percent state of charge and you're constantly moving energy around just to have them 100 percent equal between 70 and 90 percent you're all the time wasting this energy 
back and forth. Meanwhile, the passive doesn't do anything, because why should we balance in the middle? Uh, so now you might think that I'm totally dissing the active balances. No, I'm not. The active balances have a perfectly fine purpose in terms of this system here. A system where you don't have the opportunity to actually change cells. And we guys that do the power wall stuff, I mean, we're building it in such a way that we should be able to swap out cells if needed. Potentially n plus 1 strategy if you are following my videos. That means you always should be able to do uh, emergency maintenance if you need it. Uh, so basically the active balancing actually costs a lot more. Next thing is comparing the oneness balancer. Many people have seen me do the video of the 1S balancer uh, and they r say that they can do up to 6 amp balance. Yeah, they can. Uh, but the voltage need to be 1.5 volt or more. That's the difference between the cells that they are balancing between. If the voltage is only 100 millivolt, they won't do 6 amp. They might do 100 milliamp. That's important to understand. Secondly, a BMS. A BMS stands for Battery Management System or a Battery Monitoring System. For me, the balancing function is secondary to a um, battery bank that you're building. What's important that you need to have is active protection or monitoring. Something that tells you when something goes wrong. If you only buy these, the one as balancers, yeah, you might have something that is balancing the system. Yeah, it might save you from issues when uh, you have out of balance problem. But what if you have a charge controller that charges at 20 amp, 10 amp, 100 amp? They will never ever be able to cope with the balancing of the cells if you have an issue. So let's say you go down to state of charge 20% and it have balanced the pack in a lot of way and you suddenly charge it back up to 100% and you need to balance several hundred amp hours. The balances here with 6 amp maximum balance, let's say 1 amp in general, will not cope with 100 amp uh, charge and that's one of the issues a BMS itself even the shiniest cheap ones have uh, disconnect protection they have uh, overcurrent protection in terms of uh, voltage current uh, temperature and they will disconnect either the charging part or the discharging part so for instance the batrium that many people use and including me it's expensive yes I know but it does so much more because it has an active monitoring, active alerting and action. It will action on problems. So if you get those for active, you need to understand that you don't save any energy by doing it actively. Because when you have balanced the pack, they should stay balanced unless you have issues with self-discharging packs. Then you might use it. But why don't you spend a couple of more bucks balancing pack from the beginning and uh, actually building a proper pack. That would be a lot more. Uh, and you need to complement those balancers with a BMS of some kind. Uh, so suddenly you don't have a very cheap system. Uh, you also should be able to complement the BMS with some kind of charge charge controller or charge function. So guys, I hope you perhaps enjoyed this video. Um, I've tried to explain somewhat the differences between the passive and active balancers. Um, it's not easy to compare it because it's a little bit, it depends in what view you are. Um, I try to do it because from the beginning I was also all about active balancing. Uh, active balancing is great when you have different capacity packs in series. 
perfect. Um, but active balancer is five times as expensive as a proper passive balancing system. Trust me, it's so much more expensive. Um, yes, I know you can build an active system rather simply, but you still don't have all the functionality, so you need to compare apples with apples and don't compare apples with pears because then you have an issue again. Um, the numbers I talked about in the beginning. Let's say my system in terms of balancing. I hardly balance anything. Let's say I waste a couple of watt hours per day in terms of balancing and that's generally only when the pack is 100% full and I do the final charge. That's when I do a couple of top balancing. Um, potentially if we, if we take the wasted energy and take an active balancer where you can actually set the active balancing to top balance because that's the only thing I want, it would take me above to save the money to actually buy active balancing boards instead of using my passive ones. That's how little I'm currently balancing in the passive mode and that's the reason for that is because I have packs that aren't self-discharging a lot at all, hardly none. And once again, note that active balancing have their purpose but not in my power wall. So once again guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time and hopefully you learned something. If not, till next time, bye.